Amazing World of Gumball. Now, this is probably one of the most beloved cartoon shows airing today, and I've been getting requests to review it since day one. The only issue with that is that this show came out just a bit after my time. I was almost 18 when this show first aired, so I wasn't really watching new cartoons at the time. That being said, that's one of the reasons I wanted to do seasonal reviews in the first place. The opportunity to look at new shows I never really saw, that I know you guys really want to see me review. And based on how talked up the show is by you guys, I can't wait to finally take a look at it. Now, there are 36 episodes of the first season, so I'm going to be doing four parts of the seasonal review, each with nine episode reviews. So let's get started with the pilot episode, the DVD. Okay, technically, this isn't the official pilot. The real pilot episode was called Gumball and it came out in 2008, but I'm gonna skip over that one since it was only 90 seconds long. That being said, I'd still highly recommend it. It was a pretty enjoyable 90 seconds for me. Now let's take a look at the DVD. This episode, as the title suggests, is centered around a rented DVD that the main characters, Gumball and Darwin, need to return on time in order to avoid a late fee, but they end up destroying the DVD and try to find ways to fix it without telling their mother what happens. What are we gonna do? Face the consequences of our actions and tell mom. Don't be silly, I've got a much better idea. Now as pilot episodes go, this one is pretty great. It's not perfect by any means as some scenes feel a bit unfocused, but they're not really distracting. In fact, a lot of them are really creative and fun to watch. One of which being this scene here where the boys pretend to be homeless to get money for their late fee, and a homeless guy steals their money resulting in this. Also, one thing I really enjoyed about this episode is how it handled the kids hiding stuff from their parent plots. Now, while that's kind of an overused plot in most kids shows, this one did it pretty nicely. Darwin keeps suggesting they own up to what happened while Gumball talks him out of it. And I can kind of understand why Gumball does that because at the start, Gumball is, well, backsassing his mother. And her response to his smart mouth is to do this. Huh? Huh, yep, no problem, Mom. I'll take it back. Oh, very kind of you, honey. And don't forget to put on some pants. Bye-bye. So I'm assuming her doing that put the fear of God into him and he didn't want to get her pissed off. I also really like this world that the show's created. It really stands out and has its own unique style. Plus, a lot of the fast-paced animation in this episode is so fun to watch. There's also a lot of messages in this episode, but probably the best executed message it has is that you should always be honest with your parents about the wrong you've done, as that's basically the whole point the episode is trying to make. Overall, I thought this was a great start to the series. It seems to show what I assume the show is going to be all about. Kids doing kid-like things and the lessons that can be learned from them. But like I said, this is only the first episode, so let's continue with this episode, The Responsible. Oh, and for the record, this show titles its episodes in the Seinfeld format, but I'm not complaining because like Seinfeld, these titles describe in few words what the entire episode is going to be centered around. This episode is about Darwin and Gumball being put in charge of their little sister Anais while their parents go to a parent-teacher conference at school. But Gumball and Darwin have no idea what responsibility is, and instead, they just become overbearing and treat Anais as a baby, despite her being smarter than the two of them combined. You should always use a fire extinguisher or a fun available vacancy, but most importantly, call an adult or the emergency services. Anais eventually has enough of them and locks them outside, but ends up forgetting she's had the bathtub running and floods the house, forcing Darwin and Gumball to try and save her. This is another great little episode, but this one, in my opinion, has some slightly better messages and slightly better execution than the DVD did. There's too much violence on TV anyway! And you chose to demonstrate that by smashing the TV in front of me? It was the responsible thing to do. I also really like Anais, who, despite being portrayed in such an overly cutesy way, is actually a really bright and interesting character. Also, the dad character, Richard, I find really enjoyable. Normally, man-child characters bug me, but he's actually pretty entertaining and has some great lines. Well, none of this would have happened if it wasn't for you! Uh, who are you blaming here? The internet? 
And I think this episode does a good job showing you all the wrong and right ways to be responsible. Something that will be very beneficial to kids as they get older. But it doesn't lose sight of the fact that it's meant to be entertaining, not just bombarding the viewer with lessons and messages. So, the way it works in these lessons blends perfectly with the entertainment aspect of the show. I have a very short list of shows that can get me invested by only their second episode, and The Amazing World of Gumball has just made that list. So let's see if that'll continue with the third episode. The third. Clever. This episode is about Gumball and Darwin getting bored of each other, so they decide to add a third member to their group. However, the third member, Tobias, ends up bonding more with Darwin, which drives a wedge between him and Gumball. Now, like the other two episodes, I do enjoy the message it's going for. The best friends will eventually get bored of each other and sometimes need a little time away. That's also a very adult message. That being said, I would say this one handled its message a little weaker than the other two. I'm not saying it's a bad episode by any means, but it's the first episode so far that was just okay. Their search for a new friend I thought had its ups and downs, Tobias I didn't find particularly interesting. Though, in all fairness, I'm not 100% sure if he was supposed to be interesting, because anything interesting about him is given through exposition. He's a really cool guy! Well, he's okay, but he... What do you mean he's okay? He's the best guy ever! And there are some scenes that seem like filler. Like Gumball playing with this character named Alan, and the whole scene involves jokes about Alan being a balloon with no hands. Roll the dice! I can't! I got no hands! Pick a card! I still have no hands. Oh, do I have to do everything?! And it's weird seeing filler, because this episode seemed like it was trying its best to avoid filler. When it opens, they literally cut right to the, we're bored of each other thing. They don't dance around it, there's no uncomfortable dragged out scenes of them being bored of each other. It's literally at the 54 second mark that Gumball says, Maybe we're bored of each other. But even the filler scenes aren't the worst I've ever seen. They're at least tolerable. And I will admit that while Darwin being the one to bond with the new friend despite it being Gumball's idea is an overused trope with episodes like this, I really can't say I blame the episode for doing that. This is kind of a hard subject matter to be overly creative with, and despite that, there are still some very fun creative scenes. The scenes where Gumball rides a tricycle to Tobias' house is by far the highlight of the episode. And Darwin and Gumball reuniting is pretty genuine too. So, overall, while I think this episode has some flaws that keep it from being great like the other two, I guess I'd still say it's an episode worth watching. And now we move on to the debt, and... Oh boy. Okay, so this episode is about a neighbor named Mr. Robinson that Gumball, for some reason that isn't explained in this episode, loves the hell out of, headlining a talent show which Gumball is actually banned from attending. And when Mr. Robinson is backing up his car to park, very slowly I should add, Gumball acts like Mr. Robinson is going to run him over, but when Mr. Robinson stops, Gumball proclaims Mr. Robinson saved his life and promises to save his life in return. And between Gumball being banned from the talent show and the cliché of a character vowing to save someone's life, you can already gather at this point that Gumball is going to cause a lot of pain and suffering towards Mr. Robinson. And that's exactly what happens. I don't even need to go over it, it's nothing but Mr. Robinson, who's a character that's never been introduced before and that I know nothing about, trying to relax or buy stuff and Gumball causing him to get hurt under the assumption that he's somehow helping. What do you think you're doing? I'm bringing you back to life. But I was alive! Better safe than sorry! No! Also, I know it's only the fourth episode, but... Gumball feels way too stupid in this episode. I mean, I get that he's a kid and he isn't the brightest bulb and all, but here he's acting like Patrick Starr. He just seems stupider than normal to the point where it feels like too much of a stretch. To be fair though, the talent show part is pretty good. Mr. Robinson's song was pretty fun to watch and the animation is actually pretty impressive for it. But it's not anywhere near enough to save the episode. Whoa, who is this guy? That's my dad! Oh, that's your dad, is it? Yeah, I think your mom lied to you, buddy. She clearly had an affair. Okay, that's a joke. Don't take that seriously. Overall, this is just not an episode I was a fan of. It's a shocking disappointment for a show that started off so strongly. It's not even that it's underwhelming. It's just... unpleasant. I get it's trying to imply that Gumball is doing this unintentionally, but 
Because they go overboard making him look as stupid as possible, it just doesn't work as well as it could have. And while I get this was only their fourth episode, I don't think it's fair to give it a pass since the show started off so strongly. This is just a straight up terrible episode. But let's see if the show can get back on the right track with the next episode, The End. Whoa, this episode was so bad it got Gumball cancelled after only five episodes. Now, this episode is about Gumball and Darwin mistakenly thinking the world is ending because of an impending eclipse, and spending the first half of the episode trying to do all the things they wanted to do in their lives, and the second half consists of them telling their family about it, but only Richard believes them and they prepare for the apocalypse. No running in the supermarket! Okay, let's race walk! This is pretty effective. Well, it's an Olympic event, you know. This one's message is a bit more subtle than the other episodes, as its message is that you should live life to the fullest, as you never know when your life can end. I mean, yeah, another overused message, but this one handles it much more comedically, and you can tell. Again, it's not trying to hammer the message in, it's keeping comedy its number one priority. Can you think of any better way to spend our lives? Dude, I can't even think. This one actually makes my job a bit easier because there's not a lot to say about it. And by that, I mean I can't actually analyze it without spoiling all the comedy it's throwing at you. Let me just say this one was probably the funniest episode so far, as a lot of its jokes, while some being a bit forced, do hit bullseyes the majority of the time. If you're looking for a funny episode to introduce you to what Gumball's sense of humor seems to be, I would recommend starting with this one. And now we move on to the dress, which... Uh... It's about Richard shrinking Gumball's clothes in the wash and forcing Gumball to wear his mother's wedding dress to school. And everyone thinks he's an actual beautiful girl, which means they bend over backwards for him. Literally. And Darwin falls in love with him. Wait, I feel like I've seen this before in an anime. What was that anime called again? Um, uh... Oh yeah, Cory in the House. Good. Say hello to Raven. Hello to Raven. Oh, and by the way, I don't mean Darwin is in love with him like he's admiring him from afar or anything. No, no, no. He becomes a certified stalker for Gumball. He's saving Gumball's burps, putting his sweat in a locket, taking pictures of him from behind. He's full-blown creepy. She will be mine. <laughs> now, kind of like the debt, I know what this episode is trying to do. In fact, Anais says straight up what the episode is poking fun at. They think you're a beautiful girl. People will do anything for a beautiful girl. But I think just the sheer fact that Gumball's own brother... Well, adopted brother technically, but still, is trying to have a relationship with him. It's just a disturbing, cringe-inducing thing to watch. Now, this episode definitely has its funny moments. I mean, the way it shows Darwin confessing his love, while still creepy, is at least executed in a funny way, but everything else is just hard to stomach. Also, some of the jokes don't make too much sense, like the kids at school seeing Gumball naked and making fun of him, despite the fact that most of them are naked. Hell, even Darwin, I'm pretty sure, is naked. I still haven't fully established if that's his shadow or a black shirt. And in a way, I think this episode is designed for people who like uncomfortable humor, which is fine. I mean, stuff like that works for shows like South Park and Beavis and Butthead, but those shows establish that they have an awkward sense of humor. This show, however, doesn't seem like it's trying to build its humor around uncomfortableness and awkwardness. So jokes like this just seem like they'd work better as one-off jokes in other episodes, instead of a whole episode filled with them. Because filling an episode of a show like this up with awkward jokes makes the humor and the episode seem very out of place. And I don't think it's a good sign that two out of the last three episodes have been pretty damn bad. Well, let's see if The Quest will be a better episode. This one is about Gumball causing Anais to lose her favorite toy, and it ends up in the hands of Tina the T-Rex. So Gumball, Darwin, and Anais try to get it back from her. This episode is definitely a giant step up from the dress, as it blends together a nice amount of character development, humor, good pacing, intense scenes, and heartfelt moments. Now, despite it having all of that, there are one or two moments that feel a bit like filler, but 
they're like the most minor bits of filler, and they are still pretty enjoyable despite going on a bit long. Like Gumball and Darwin trying to get the toy back from Tina while she's sleeping with the pole, which Gumball initially says is hard to control, but then he's able to easily use it to mess with her. <laughs> Look, it's like she's smiling. Happy, sad. Happy, sad. <laughs> While it's a bit of filler, it's still very entertaining. Also, the way that the three of them accidentally wake Tina up is one of the funniest moments in the show so far to me, as well as leads to this amazing Jurassic Park inspired chase scene, including a heartfelt reveal about Tina and a message about helping others out by making your own personal sacrifices. Whenever people talk to me about the amazing world of Gumball, these were the kinds of episodes I expected from it, so I think this episode was right where Gumball found its sweet spot. If you want something to give you a nice taste of what Gumball is all about, definitely start here. You won't regret it. And after that bit of awesomeness, we move on to The Spoon, which is about Richard forgetting to buy Nicole, Gumball's mom, a gift for her birthday. So he sends Gumball and Darwin to the gas station to buy her a gift. And a fingerprint holds up the gas station with the spoon. Yeah, in this episode, a spoon is a replacement for a gun, which I have to admit is pretty clever and pretty funny. Three seconds! He's got a spoon! Ah! Now I gotta be honest, at first, I thought this was gonna be kinda like the debt, because it at first makes Gumball and Darwin seem stupid as they believe the robber is a charity worker and start helping him rob the place. But, unlike the debt, there's an actual logical reason for them to think this, because, for one, they didn't see what happened, and they clearly aren't around many bad guys. And also, despite them helping him rob the place initially, they do it in a very childlike innocence kind of way that honestly makes it a lot less frustrating. Awesomely kind? Which charity is it? Huh? Oh, uh, um, bald people. Can we help? You're kidding, right? We'd never joke about bald people. And also, to this episode's credit, they do eventually realize he's not a good guy and handle it in a pretty awesome way. Give me the money! Oh, come on, you're not gonna stop me with a marshmallow. Ow! That sausage was frozen! This results in another really awesome chase scene. You know, this show has a knack for making awesome chase scenes, doesn't it? I think a big part of that is that whoever's animating these scenes really knows what they're doing, and they're clearly having a ball with it. Also, another thing I really appreciate, which I won't spoil, is this is one of the only episodes I've seen that does a false accusation ending perfectly. It's probably the best use of a false accusation I've ever seen in a show. And if you know me, you know I absolutely hate those things, so that's saying a lot. Overall, while it's not a perfect episode by any means, it's certainly very entertaining. It's got great commentary on violence in cartoons, its jokes are decent, the writing is pretty clever, it's just a great episode. Definitely one worth checking out. And finally, we end this video with a review on The Pressure, which is about a few of the girl characters meeting in a treehouse talking about boyfriends they have, all of which are fake. But one girl, the clearly stuck up bitch of the group, Misami, tells them that she's dating Darwin, which she proclaims after Darwin and Gumball make a pals before Gal's pack with a few other male characters. So the majority of this episode is Masami treating Darwin as her boyfriend, much of the group's fury and Darwin's dismay, and Gumball being conflicted with trying to ask out his crush Penny and holding up his own end of the pact. Now at first, I wasn't sure I'd like this episode, mostly because I've seen this plot a lot before. It's kind of a trademark kid show plot. The girl wanting to date a guy either to show off or because they really like them, and the boy being scared to death about it. While I don't exactly hate that plot, it's just a bit overdone to where sometimes it feels too cliched. But I wouldn't say that's exactly the case here. I would say this episode did a pretty good job with this plot. Actually, one thing I really appreciate is this episode's little jab towards most shows that do this plot, as most shows that do this focus on the character coming up with a scheme to get the girl to hate them, instead of just being upfront with them. So, you mean openly expressing your emotional turmoil rather than coming up with a convoluted little scheme? It's so crazy, it just might work! But in this episode, instead of being upfront being the correct way to handle it, this is what happens instead. <laughs> Okay, I didn't mean it. Boyfriend joke. Look, I'm laughing. <laughs> I'll go to the 
tree house. I'll, I'll, I'll kiss you. Okay, see you there, sweet lips. Yeah, it just makes the whole situation worse, which is honestly how I think something like this would go over in real life. Also, the ending, which I won't spoil, managed to make an uncomfortable joke really funny, which is a point I brought up earlier when talking about the dress. That this show can make uncomfortable jokes work, but only in small doses. And it's nice to see that this episode understood that. Overall, this episode is pretty decent. I wouldn't say it was the best I looked at in this video, but it's definitely one I'd recommend looking at if you want to see a good use of this plot. And that'll do it for this video, and... So far, I would say these episodes were pretty hit or miss, but in all fairness, the good episodes I've come across really show a lot of potential with this show. I feel like I'm slowly starting to see why people really like this show, and I can't wait to see what more great episodes are to come in the next seasonal review. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next review.